This is More Than Therapy Podcast. More Than Therapy. This is More Than Therapy. It's okay for you to have routine checks with a therapist to make sure that you have someone that you can talk to about how you're feeling. This is More Than Therapy Podcast. This is More Than Therapy Podcast. We have to overcome so many obstacles. And welcome to another episode of Morning Therapy. Today's special guest, Tony Agnew Rover, a graduate of NC18 and North Carolina Central University, and now a licensed clinical social worker doing her best work regarding mental health. Tony, I've known you a long time. I can sing a song about it, but no <laughs> other tunes on this device. It's been a long time. Long time. You and I talked before about having a purposeful life. What brought you to your purpose of doing mental health help, especially during these daunting times? What brought me to mental health is probably what brought me into social work, which was um, my grandparents. And so I was raised in a small town here in North Carolina um, by my grandparents. And when I was in college, doing an internship with senior services at that time, uh, I was providing services to older adults. So I saw the impact that I was making. I saw it so much that the information I was receiving from that agency, I was able to go back to my county and find the same services for my grandmother. Um, And so it was something like the grocery bag program. So when one doesn't want like the Meals on Wheels, they could have the grocery bag program. And I was able to sign her up for that. And I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't in the internship. And I said, oh yeah, this is my purpose. Social work is for me. I love helping other people. And so I did straight social work for about seven years until I realized I wanted to go back to school and get my graduate degree so I can become a therapist. So graduated um, with my MSW, and then I obtained my licensed clinical social work on certification. So now I'm licensed. There you go. There you go. So after you graduated from NC, AT&T. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. North Carolina A&T State University. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. Yeah. So after I graduated from NC, AT&T, <laughs> um, you... <laughs> What was your first step? Did you go right into human services as a social worker? Actually, I didn't. I worked in Greensboro at American Express. American Express? American Express. So you got good credit. (laughs) (laughs) I worked there. (laughs) Um, But you know what? That was a great stepping stone for me. What's Um, up? So American Express, you know, is the credit card and it was a call center, but there in order for you to succeed, you had to speak a certain way. Yeah. And you had to be on point. And if you speak a certain way, then you will receive incentives, which was money. And back then I was all about the money. So I'm like, okay, may I place you on hold for one or two minutes while I review that information for you? Is that your a- Thank you so much. Is that your at and voice? That's my American Express. I'm sorry. Yeah, American Express. And then I place them on hold for one or two minutes and then I get back on the phone with them and check in with them and like I was so on point that I made top 10% of the company because I was all about the incentives and that money. So you had had like different voices, different accents? (laughs) No, (laughs) no. Um, But I'm thankful for that job Mm -hmm. because it also gave me a leadership position there. So um, when I applied to become a coach, which is actually like a facilitator Mm -hmm. for training class, Mm -hmm. for new hires, um, I was able to have the opportunity to coach um, other individuals on how they can become top 10% in in the company as well. Mm -hmm. And I was assigned to go to Texas to help open an American Express call center there. So a lot of experience, I appreciate it. Um, And then I, left American Express and obtained a job at uh, working at a Head Start out in Eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a while. Um, I eventually started working at a nonprofit organization um, out in Eastern North Carolina and then I went to social services. And in social services I was working in child protective services. So I did that for like three and a half years. Mm 
that was hard, <laughs> challenging. I can only imagine. Um, well, no, I can't. I used to work there, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to a point where I was starting to become slightly immune to what I would see. Right. And I knew I had to go because no one should, should feel that way or do that. Um, it was just almost like I, I saw abuse so much. I saw neglect so much that it was like automatic for me. And I said, I, I just, I cannot continue to, to do this. So I was thankful to uh, receive a job offer for the state. And I worked in Butner. Um, working with IDDD individuals, so intellectual, um, disabled, and development delay individuals um, out in Butner. I did that for two years, and it was during that time frame where I noticed that a lot of the staff members would come in and visit me in the office and talk about the problems that was having and um, like on the unit with their supervisor, work in general, almost like I was EAP. <laughs> um, but it also made me realize like, I'm really good at this. You know, I should really be a therapist. Let me look more online about what I can do to become a therapist. And then when I saw I had to go back to school, I'm like, oh my goodness, I've been out of school for, what is it, seven years at that time or so. Uh, nine years, I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta go all the way back to school at this age, but I did it. So that's when I went to North Carolina Central University, mm -hmm. and I, that was 2016, 2018, I graduated from there with my Master's of Social Work. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, and from there, I just, I was working at a shelter here in Durham. Um, I worked at a psych hospital. Mm. Uh, this is with my provisional license. I worked at um, an outpatient counseling center okay. and providing uh, outpatient therapy. Right. And then after that, that's when I was brought on to the federal government. Okay. Out of all those jobs, including American Express, which ones do you enjoy the most? Or which one do you think you might transition back to or, you know, One I enjoyed the most. Well, I like my current job with the federal government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would too. I had those benefits. <laughs> <laughs> but also, being the outpatient therapist okay. was great. Yeah, yeah. I true. I I saw the impact. Like I know I I make an impact on others, but to see someone come in and especially when they know they have changed and they telling you and you see it yourself right. and they are stating like the ones who are ready I, I had a client that came in and she had her notebook she'll cross her legs she'll have her pen and a highlighter and she's ready to take down whatever I say to her if I provide her with homework she'll write that down if she need me she would she know how to contact me she'll call me and say hey I have a question about this you know can you help me with it? She was always on time with her appointments. Like, and she said that she could truly feel a difference with her coming to therapy yeah. every week, every week. And I noticed the difference as well. Um, it was someone else who was really struggling with um, depression. And they said they noticed the difference. I saw a different mood and affect when they would come into the session, so. You mentioned that American Express, you got into coaching, you was coaching other people to their success. Um, in a recent episode of More Than Therapy, I spoke with Dr. Tracy Phillips, who actually moved from counseling to coaching, and how mm -hmm. coaching was a very supplemental income, and actually was surpassing in some ways her regular income. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So since that you had such a niche for coaching, that might be your next multiple stream of income. Speak that to me. Speak to me. I love it. I love it. I want to know more about it. Yeah. I've, I've heard about it before and know a few individuals who are um, proceeding in coaching. And I, I've always been curious to know more about it. Right. So, so it's good to know that you, you have a good connect. I mean, I have a connect. That's right. <laughs> Your people, my people. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, you